think the musicians they very very focused and concentrated but at the same time they're open-minded and they want to be challenged and to, to have fun in performing. My role as a conductor is to inspire them. They are inspiring me. You inspire somebody and somebody inspires you, uh, not only in, in the music world but also in life. And what you can achieve together by using this energy exchange is the, probably the most valuable thing that you can experience. I was, uh, honestly, I was, I was um, a little bit surprised how how well prepared and how professional they sound. The first rehearsal was, you know, to me it was no different than, than any first rehearsals I do with professional orchestras. You know, I, I, I'm Ukrainian and I'm uh, thinking that it would make such difference in my country if we had a project like National Youth Orchestra everywhere because it's absolutely astonishing. You're all in Woodwin. What's it like being in the Woodwin section at NYO? I love the Woodwin section. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, just out of curiosity, so which one out of you are flute players? Okay, uh, any clarinets? Uh, bas is there anyone doing bassoon here? Uh, okay, so um, for... Oh, and oboes. And oboes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's just forget the No, I can't, I can't remember. So for... Um, let's start with the higher woodwinds then. What would you say your role is as higher woodwind players? Well, I think the upper woodwinds, uh, the upper woodwinds have a very important role uh, in that they, you know, they usually provide quite a lot of sort of sparkly colour. Um, you know, especially when the, the flutes, for example, are in the upper register, it can, it can be lovely. But um, they also the sort of each each instrument in. Well, I mean, specifically even in the uh, in the upper woodwinds. I mean, flute and oboe because the sounds are produced. Um, so differently, I think um, having that variety of colour um, it really, yeah, it really adds something quite special to the orchestral texture. And what about lower woodwinds? What would you say, you guys? Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like for bassoons, they add like a bass and like a soul to music, and um, like the bassoon parts are always really good because you get to play with different sections of the orchestra and it's always really diverse music and it's, it's really good, I love it. And for like this, okay, so this question isn't quite for flute players because um, most people know about flute, but for the other woodwind instruments which are a bit less accessible, how did you guys get into it? What kind uh, of led you to it? There's a teacher in my local area, uh, Rebecca, and she really gets kids into bassoon at a young age. And yeah, it's really good having people like that to encourage instruments like bassoon because they're not as common. So. Mm. What well, about oboes? Cause, well, yeah. my brother played the oboe, but then when he went to university, he left his oboe at home. So I mm. kind of like picked it up and started playing it. But I think, I think when he was practicing it, I was obviously home, but I was a baby, so I think I was, I was used to its sounds, and that kind of like inspired me to play it probably. And for people who want to try and get into NYO as a woodwind player, do you have any advice you would give to them? Like about the audition or what it's like when they get there. Yeah. Excerpts, no. Yeah, yeah. this is the excerpts. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, come on. Lesson to me. Relax. Yeah. Great. Marcus of the NYO Orchestra. Um, <laughs> What is it like playing a harp in an orchestra for NYO? Anyone can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's really fun. Um, sometimes it's, um, it's, it's quite different from other instruments, I would say, because we're, we're not really there for the, for the sort of vital beginning point, but more to add a bit of texture to it. So our role is quite different from that of most other instruments, I think. But which makes it also a bit more exciting in some ways. Okay. Being a harpist is almost like more stressful than actually being like a violinist or something because you have to count a lot more. And I don't know, it's just. Maybe half a lot. Yeah, maybe a lot. How did you guys kind of get into harp? Because um, it's not like the easiest instrument to get a hold of or something. So, how did you guys kind of get introduced to that? Um, I think. 
I think I just knew somebody that played the harp, um, and so she gave me a few just fun little lessons, and I just really liked it. Oh. Um, and uh, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to be a harpist in NYO just try honestly the top of my head I think Thank you. Um... I'm Batania, I play the violin. I'm Rosa, I play the viola. I'm Eloise, I play the cello. I'm Seth, I also play the cello. So, um, you're all in the string section. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to play the strings in NYU? <laughs> um, it's really nice because often the strings get Nice, yeah, nice yeah. tunes. Yeah. So nice, and you're all just going like, you're just going like, yeah, 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 lots of laughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it can be a little bit difficult because the string sections are really, really big. So it's like quite hard to stay in time with everybody from the section. Yeah, that's true. Just try not to get the bow in your face. Uh, yeah, that's also quite, quite squishy sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's really hard. But also, um, I like, I really like personally titty strings. Like just seeing all of the different sections come together, like especially in the Sabinas. I think that's a great part of being a show with you. And uh, how did you guys all get into like get into playing your instruments and playing like at orchestras? What started that? Okay, so, well, I started on the view, on the violin, sorry, because uh, my mum's a violinist. But the thing is, like, she always got really bossy when I was practicing and stuff. So I was like, well, well I'm not doing this anymore. So then I played the viola because she can't read the viola clef, and that's why I played the viola. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. Um, what about you? You guys play cello. Um, um, I, I just wanted the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. And um, for people who are like trying to get into the strings at NYO, is there any advice you would give them? Practice your accent really well. Yeah, okay. that's true. And make sure you don't just play that you have like a kind of musical idea of how they fit in. Mm-hmm. And also like choose for your pieces, choose pieces you really, really enjoy so you can kind of show your passion. Yeah, also when you're, because um, obviously one of the problems with the second round of auditions is that you don't get to rehearse with the pianist until the day. So um, just make sure you choose pieces that you know the piano part for really well so that you can like easily connect with the pianist. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. You um, had a second audition where you played with others, isn't it? Um, in the process. Uh, what was that like? Because my section, we didn't do that. So yeah, just to give an idea. What kind of happened in that? Well, uh, you do, you play your pieces and your excerpts individually like in the first round and then you come back in the workshop where you all play your excerpts together. So it tests all of how you play together as a section and how you miss Okay. Yeah, I think it's really important to like blend your sound in that just to show that you can't just play on your own. You, you, you take section. turns leading, so obviously when you're leading, you have to give directions to other people, but when you're not leading, you have to follow as you okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is Gemma. Hi. She's the other orchestral pianist and she's been here from Easter, isn't it? Yeah, I did the Easter course as well as part of MIA, so this is my second course. So what can you tell us about NYO and your experience with them? Um, it's just a really great organisation and just being able to be part of something on piano is such a big group. It's just amazing. So. For other pianists, would you say it's that it's a worth like worth their um, time to try and explore orchestral piano? Oh yeah, definitely, because it's such a different experience. You can really learn a lot from that. I think. 
Okay. So this is Dawn Hardwick, our tutor for the orchestral piano. Um, would you like to tell them a little bit about the Celeste that we are playing on? I will indeed. Okay, so this week with NYO we're focusing on two pieces which have Celeste in them. And this is our beautiful instrument for the week. Um, and a Celeste um, is what the orchestral pianists usually play. It's a different instrument entirely. It has this kind of beautiful, twinkly, heavenly sound that adds colour and texture to other instruments of the orchestra. It's used um, most famously in uh, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy um, from the Nutcracker Suite by Tchaikovsky and also um, another super famous one of course is the beginning of Hedrick's theme um, from Harry Potter. So um, you've been in uh, orchestras before and you've yeah. played as an orchestral pianist. Uh, how would you say, what would you say the role of the orchestral pianist in an orchestra really is? Wow, good question. Okay, well I think, dependent on repertoire, the pianist in an orchestra has so many roles. Obviously the piano is a solo instrument, so there are certain pieces where we could have big soloistic roles, for example the music of Stravinsky, um, a lot of the kind of the Shostakovich symphonies or Prokofiev symphonies have big piano parts that are more soloistic. We can also be hidden back in the texture, just giving, giving kind of extra support to the basses um, or to the percussion section. Um, and we, we can be there right in the middle as well, kind of, you know, helping out the strings in certain places um, and kind of providing a, a rhythmic kind of percussive element to, to the music that's being played.